Yeah. Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of the JMAC Podcast. I'm John Mann and of course this podcast is sponsored by orgoretro.com. Use my promo code JMAC Podcast to get 15% off the my website. And uh, as you can see, I'm joined by uh, three great cabin men today for a Balanya club special. So uh, really looking forward to it today now. So uh, I'm joined by Niall McDermott, Orca Riley and Thomas Moore. So I'll start off with uh, Niall McDermott, the best of the fucking cabin. How are you? <laughs> Uh, not too bad now, John. How's things? Good stuff, good stuff. Park, how are you keeping? Yeah, John, very good, yeah. Okay, no complaints here. Happy days. And uh, my local postman, Tom, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a bother me, John. Happy days, happy days. And I believe you have a bit of a plug to say, Tom, uh, regarding the Banya GA fundraiser. Yeah, we're um, we're doing a, a raffle for a, a Honda giveaway. It's, um, you have an option of two prizes um, you can get a lawnmower set uh, to ride on lawnmower push lawnmower and strimmer or you can opt for a, a honda quad and trailer and sprayer so tickets are on sale now and uh, might get a link up for that somehow yeah <laughs> give damien riley a shout <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant stuff brilliant stuff and uh How's life, I suppose, uh, Niall? Um, we were talking off air about Cavan, uh, probably disappointment so far in the league, but uh, what have you made, it all, made of it all so far? Yeah, um, I've only seen the first two games and that, but I suppose, as you said there, it's disappointing after for coming off a high last year, but um, I suppose it's hard to be too critical after the, the, the long layoff, and there's a there's a big, there's a lot of injuries in that there as well, and I suppose I didn't see the Derry game, but just from chatting to people, there was a big improvement. And um, look, could you be hoping that they'll, they'll they'll take care of business against Wicklow, and then like you'll, you'll keep your position for next year? But it's all it's all looking towards the championship, really. Yeah, yeah, you'd like to think so. And you're, what about yourself, Park? Have you been keeping line Cavan's uh, outgoings? Yeah, I have. Yeah, um, I, I suppose overall, I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, like it was always going to be hard after the, the, the success of last year to to keep that momentum going. And I think Mickey, given it's such a short campaign, I think Mickey's priorities was to guess, try out the new blood, and see where he stood with them. Um, you know, if he wanted to to get straight up, he'd he'd pretty much started the exact same team as last year. But he's brought in a few new players. Um, and we've seen those the last the last couple of games. But um. Like yeah, it's such a shortened league. It's hard to know. You lose your first game. Like, for man is always a difficult team to play against. They, they drag you down to your level. I I actually think in the first half, if we had got two three points ahead, you actually could have went on and beat for man by seven or eight points. The same way Jerry went on and beat them. But the longer they stay in the game, the more they grew in confidence, and it just turns into that sort of. Uh, arm wrestle between the two teams and, and then all of a sudden we were on the back foot we, um, losing James then didn't help and, and you just seen lads kind of under, you know under pressure and panicking a bit um, but that, that, was the, that was the main game like really that was the game to, to win you win that you beat Longford and you're going in then both in a game against Derry top of the table and the mood's very different so like overall um, I do think that they'll stay up I think they'll, they'll win next again so um I'd, I'd be more um, focusing on the championship. I think Mickey has has found that the secret that the league success or, or failure doesn't really um, correspond into into a championship campaign, and hopefully that that sort of form continues. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. And uh, Tom, what about yourself? Have you been keeping running, Kevin? Yeah, um, probably just a few injuries um, kind of scuppered their chances there for the last two games. You know, we missed. Uh, Kieran the Holland and James are the last day big the big time, you know, driving forward. Um you know the body's covered it well there, but I think that's it's two northern teams as well. They've got a couple of weeks ahead of you in training, so you know that didn't help either. But sure, as Paul says, it's all about the championship now. Well, get over with the first and, and then he says he, he has the secret for the championship win and hopefully we can retain it. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It'd be brilliant, but uh, Sharon obviously going to be posting a huge uh, test as we've seen in recent weeks. And uh, I suppose the boys can crack into it. Uh, we can start with yourself, Porrick. Uh, you represent you represent Banya from 2002. You've won two intermediate titles, an Ulster Club Championship, one Senior Championship, and one Division One League. So very impressive stuff for yourself. And uh, I suppose Porrick 2002 came around and you got the ball rolling for the mighty Banya. Yeah, t- t- it seems a long time ago now. I, I, I'm as long player. And as 
with Ban Yaz and nearly wasn't playing. Um, yeah, the the first I suppose I was brought in was it would have been under um, Park Brady at the time and, and Robbie McDermott, um, both two two men still involved with the club. But um, yeah, I think uh, we got to in 2003 got to an intermediate final um, against Den, beating that year, and then managed to be 2000. We got back up again to an intermediate final in 2006, I think, and then finally won it in 2007. So that was, that was the first bit of senior set. Where I, I, I ever got so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I suppose uh, kind of pushing on and kind of making that day before Balanya. Was that something you always wanted to do as a young fella, Pork, to represent the Balanya senior footballers? Ah, yeah, like, um, no more than Tommy and I, like, we kind of, around the time, grew up in the football field, um, you know, as soon as, uh, as soon as Saturday morning hit, you were going down, um, Paddy the Bun was the, the kind of under 10 manager, you know, I, I say under 10s, I don't know what age groups were, were down there, it was from, from when you could walk to the school, tell you were, tell you were told you were too old, um, so, like, we were there from, and then when training had finished 10 or 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock on a Saturday morning, you'd, you'd pretty much stay there in the field all day until you were called for dinner. Um, and so the, the senior team used to come in on a Saturday evening, but a lot of league games at the time were played at 7 o'clock, and that was the time you were kind of pushed from the field to behind the gate, and you'd watch the seniors as young as then, and, and that was when, you know, you really... That's when you wanted to emulate them players and, and start playing for senior football. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I was obsessed with football as a young fella. So um, as soon as as soon as I was able to to pull on the, the jersey for Balnea and play senior, um, I jumped at it. Yeah, and how special of the club is Balnea? I suppose uh, Pork. Obviously, you've seen it all and been around the block since two thousand two. So that's no mean feat. So how special of it of it is the club in uh, in Cavan there? Ah, yeah, it's very, it's very special to me. Like even last year, John Covert kind of shown how, how kind of special it is. In that, you know, it was strange times. You, you're separated from everyone. You don't see friends. You don't see family. And um, I'm living in Dublin myself, so you know, it, I even felt even more estranged. But as, as soon as sport, it was kind of the first thing lifted last year, and the same again this year. Yeah. As soon as sport lifted um, and the restrictions lifted, we were straight back down you got to see everyone and, and, and hang out that way and, and that kind of that kind of transcends through even we see with our own weddings and, and different stuff like that it's always the same crews going to it all so so it's like football has given me a lot in my life and, and, and especially my club has been at the heart of that so um, yeah Banya for me is always going to be it's going to be special it's going to be that, that that sort of bond with, with the players I've I've played with and, and won with yeah yeah and as we alluded to at the start, uh, two intermediate titles for yourself, Pork, as well, and along with the other lads as well. So to get that first title in uh, 2007, it was, it was a special, special moment for the club. Ah, it was, yeah. The, the, we, had, we had lost, at that stage, I, I was only 21, but I had lost two um, and played in three finals because we lost the previous year to Drummond in, in a replay. Um, and kind of, fit, you know, you, even even at that age, kind of thought, Jesus, this is this is a lot harder than than it should be, and um, I always thought the more than well when Niall came on the scene, it was, he thought it was easy. He, I don't think he lost the championship match when he first came on. But I don't. I had lost as many finals as Niall had lost matches with the club. But um, when uh, yeah, it was great to get great to get that first win, and it was it was probably the worst we had played that year in, in the final. And um, we really struggled to get over over Lavi. And um, there seemed to be a bogey team for us back then. Um, I think it might have been only a point or two in, it in the end. I think we got a goal late in the second half. We got another one cleared off the our end, or they hit the crossbar. So, but you know, as soon as as soon as we won that um, that intermediate championship, I think that changed for a lot of us because that was the first time we had kind of got the the bogeyman off the back, and and we, we actually played a, a completely different, um, well, not on purpose style of football. It just so happened once we went into the the Ulster Championship that year, and um, we just were a different team, and there was a new lease of life. We kind of had that. Um, that freedom to kind of go and express ourselves. I mean, you know, coming through, just playing with no fear, just to get get on the ball and, and take men on. And whereas we had before that, it was a lot. It was very just old stagnant sort of football that that had kind of got us that far. And just a couple of good players up front, I think, just got us over the line in that first intermediate. Yeah, yeah, and obviously in recent years, intermediate is probably one of the hardest competitions as we've seen over the years. So to win it back in two thousand and seven, and you probably had a lot of teams at the peak of the powers back then, but uh, so much achievement, really. 
Yeah, it was great. It was great to win it back then. Like I said, it was um, it, it was a hard it, it's a hard title to win um, because there's even more so than senior and that there's there's probably more teams able to win an an intermediate um, and on any given year than there is a senior. You can pretty much count in one hand every year the teams really challenging for a senior, um, whereas the intermediate, um, you seen last year with with Butler's Bridge getting to a final, um, like two years ago, they were they were the up and coming teams. So like. Any, any, you know, there's really there's good depth. There's, you know, it's very hard to pick the four semi finalists any year in, in an intermediate. So it's it those ones that uh, when it does come around to final time, you really want to be taking taking the chance. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And obviously uh, that year as well, you won an Ulster Club Championship. And Calvin teams obviously hasn't had much luck in that competition over the years we've seen. And so obviously to tag on an Ulster Club Championship, uh, Park is probably couldn't believe your luck. Yeah, like like I was alluding to earlier, once we kind of got into Ulster, it just seemed that the shackles were off, and we just we played um, a really exciting style of football. We had lots of players like Thomas Niall, uh, David Finnegan, brother Niall. They were all teenagers at the time, and we still had a few of the older players. Um, Declan Beard was on it, Adrian McGuire, our manager, these is Paul Galligan. So we had, a, we had a great mix of that um youth and, and and experience and it was it was just great. There were great days those days um playing in Ulster. It was, it was um like obviously a few of us had played with Calvin so you got the you got the experience that getting on a bus match day heading up the north um pre match meals and all that but but at club level you you don't really experience that. So it was great to actually experience that with your club men and you know get, you know those days kind of away days heading up the bus up we were playing up in, in um places like Old Man and like that. It was in Casement Park before it fell asunder. Um it was just it was just great times. It was um it was a real like a very of those games um, and they were obviously great that we were winning them too that's that's the way you kind of build morale um, like we trained after we won we trained pretty much through that winter and Christmas um, the All-Ireland semi-final I think was played in February but no one complained it was, it was completely different to, to maybe now having to drag lads back you know early in the winter you just uh, you'd roll your eyes at the thoughts of it then, but it was just we were just buzzing to be playing. It was buzzing to be winning and and competing at a level that that none of us had had ever um, gotten to before. So yeah, no, that was, it was a great campaign. It was great great to experience it um, and and to to win with that with that side. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, pushing on the years after that, uh, that uh, senior championship medal in twenty thirteen, and against obviously very strong Calvin Gales team and. and I think if you got a chance during lockdown, you would have been watching it. Just a terrific performance for yourselves and to get to that holy grail. And uh, what a performance, what a victory, and uh, what a moment for the club. Yeah, I think that, that was the 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 pinnacle. Really, um, was winning that that senior championship. Um, we probably started that year um, without playing the best of football. We had, uh, you know, we even had you know a couple of, I suppose, internal rows amongst ourselves and, and with management. Um, and that probably brought the, the the best out of us. You know, you kind of need that, uh, you know, clearing off the air and, and to say whether we're all in this or, or out of it. Um, but when, when the championship started that year, we, we had been going well. We had been training very well. The the early results didn't really um, didn't really show how how well we were going. But uh, I think that once we um we, we were I think it was Cullens we were playing in in Virginia. And we were eight points down at half time, um, and and probably in the second half, give give one of the best performances that I've ever seen that the, the club give, and we turned that that game around. And so, even though you were just winning a just winning a quarter final to get into a semi final, or even the I think the last group game to get into a quarter final, we were just walking off that field, you know, felt uh, ten foot tall just because we had turned around. and were full full um, full worth that victory. Um, so yeah, and then obviously then we did, I suppose, in some respects, get the handy side of the draw. Um, but you know, that, from our perspective, we we drew two of our near neighbours in in Lincoln and Christian Law. So even if we, even if they were favourites for the championship that year, just we don't always um, see it as a tight game against those two, just because they're, they're our near neighbours and their local derbies. It just always adds to that. Um, so yeah, to to get across those two matches, then we we thought we were. In, in great stead going into the, the, the final. Um it probably helped us that that Calvin Gale and tearing up uh, tearing everyone apart on the other side of the draw and um, they were huge favourites that, that had 
probably they were at the peak of the powers in terms of the forward line at that time. I think that was, you know, if you might have to go back a good five, six, seven years before that to when the Gales had a strong forward line. You know, Shawnee Johnson, um, Martin Dunn, Mickey Link, or, you know, the two Murrays were, or, well, Niall certainly was on it. Niall Smith was there, thereabouts. They were just, um, they, they, at, that, at that time, they probably had six or seven forwards in their panel. Um, and it was very, you know how do you how do you try to stop them all? Um, and that that side of it probably took the took the pressure off us. We could kind of go in and and kind of you know just kind of nod and and say yeah, you know fair play. Whenever anyone raised the question of how we, how are you going to stop the gates, um, we knew we knew we were kind of trailing well, trailing well, and and as I was saying before, we knew that you know unlike the gates, we weren't going to be back in the county final year in year out. Uh, we really had to put everything into that one appearance and and kind of and we relied on that we kind of said you know they can't you know it's most of our players had four five medals at that time had maybe seven or eight county final appearances so there was no way that they could want it the same way we wanted it and that's what we we concentrated on we said listen once it comes down to us if if there's less than a goal in it with 15 minutes to go there's no way uh, they're going to win a ball ahead of us. There's no way they're going to catch it ahead of us. There's no way they're they're going to work harder than than we are in that last fifteen minutes. And um, whatever about the rest of the match, their their skills may be superior to ours. But we knew that if we if we got us to within a score with fifteen minutes to go, that we we um we'd hope Danny that that our that our perseverance would take over. And um, lucky enough, we were actually ahead with fifteen minutes to go. So it was just a case of, of hanging on for for dear life, I suppose. But um, we we managed. Yeah, yeah, it was just a sensational performance for yourselves. And so, was tell me the week leading up to that game against Cavan Gales. Obviously, you've, you've mentioned the strength and depth that they have. So, what was probably said in the week leading up to that? You know, to kind of get us over the line, and I suppose have that mentality that you could just go and do it. And of course, you did go and do it. Yeah, do it. it probably wasn't a huge amount till that. I I stayed in Dublin that week. I didn't come down. They didn't want me traveling up and down. Me and the brother till the Friday night. Um, so I only we only kind of all got together on on the Friday. Did I suppose as most teams two days before a, a big match, a very light sort of session where it's morely it's it's more just getting the minds right and um, but we I, I do look like we were in the dressing room on the friday night and we all we had a good meeting that night um, but, and I, I just i think we left that that dressing room that time on the friday just having a real sense of confidence and um, just the way we spoke and you know kind of owned up to everyone's role and everyone owned up to the, what they needed to do that you know it wasn't one of these meetings where you know lads are stuck for stuck for words or anything it just it just seemed to to feel right and we just said like you know that we were just going to basically leave it all in the field on, on the on the sunday and and we just broke up and i think, I think we, everyone just kind of went home that friday night with a real sense of confidence yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent. and uh it's a fantastic fantastic uh, victory for the club and i suppose probably could pushing off from that uh poor exposed obviously intermediate seniors it's very hard over the years and again you uh, won the intermediate championship in uh, 2020 last year and it was probably a tough championship for everyone last year so a special time again for your club in 2020 uh, Pork. yeah it was yeah um like it, it was unusual last year it probably suited me in that it was a, a shortened campaign it, it was Pretty much, you know, I was allowed to stay in Dublin for a, a long period, um, and that kind of suits me. That the travel, the travel does does it doesn't really lend well to my my legs up and down the road. I seem to get get injured whenever whenever I'm travelling too much. But um, that kind of suited me. It suited it probably as as Niall said beforehand. What were probably one of the elderly teams um, on the go. We'd have a lot of lads of that 29 plus sort of age bracket so the shortened season meant lads had, had a long long winter to recover and um, most lads uh, were, were keeping themselves in good in good condition and, and have a great they have, you know they have a great um sort of physical attribute about them anyway so when we kind of got back together it, it wasn't like a normal pre-season where you had to dog lads for four weeks to get to, you know to shake the cobwebs off lads came back yeah, fairly yeah. And ready to go, so it was, it was just great to kind of hit the ground running. There was a buzz about seeing everyone again, um, and it was just it was just that sort of um, there was a great feeling to the championship. It was just you were straight in. It was nice summer days. It, eventually, the first two two games didn't feel that way, but when it got there, it was you know nice summer days playing dry ball, and um, 
Yeah, and it's just pure. It was it, because there wasn't that um, eight nine league games beforehand. I, I don't think managers themselves had times to start using these complex sort of strategies. It was just more of fifteen v fifteen, few matches, a few switches, major games, but it just made for a, a more open championship. You know, managers weren't able to start devising these defensive game plans. And it's just very enjoyable. It nearly felt like a, a throwback to the the early games where you were just thrown out, you were told who you were marking the uh, you know, a few actually him and it was just the ball thrown in the air and, and the team win. And and you know, I think that type of football us, um, you know, I I'd, I'd have great belief in us the football and team. So the more it's like that and the less it's it's more tactic orientated and defensive strategies, I think plays into our hands. Yeah, I'm interested to kind of hear your perspective on that kind of championship. And obviously, you didn't have probably much time to prepare. You were saying training was uh, nip and tuck. So, at the end of that kind of different sort of championship as well, uh, Pork, obviously, very enjoyable Cabin Club Championship for 2020. Yeah, no, it's enjoyable. Like, I, I, I play play games for training any any year. Um, so, the more, like, the more it was, yeah, it was, it was facing that it was just you know we, we we were kind of two three weeks we pretty much played i think four challenge games each week before we played the game we had a bye and then it was straight into the championship the four group games i think with a week off and then we were into um into quarterfinals and that so it, it was just you know the team the team kind of then has you know the manager has an easy job where he's just picking players and form players uh, you're moving players tactically it's it's less so about this big master strategy from last January or February and defensive and dropping players back and whatever. And uh, don't have you know club teams didn't have the the time to put that together. So I think it was just you know even the game against Bally Hayes in the semi final it was just end to end it was we attacked they attacked we attacked and it was pretty much an old fashioned shootout and, and whoever scored the most was going was going to win um, and and not to say that there wasn't good defense in it it was it was probably our defense that that took us through that day but it was still it was just that like a game of basketball it was just end to end and they're the games I, I really enjoy and it's great I think it's great for the fans too had had they been there um, I'm sure they were able to sort of watch it on, on streaming but um and hopefully we get we get fans back soon enough for, for the for this year's championship and, and league Fingers crossed, for fingers crossed. And tell me about that man beside you, Niall. He uh, had an OK game final. <laughs> he did, yeah. Like, I, 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 would, I often wonder what kind of career I'd have had if Niall Mack wasn't born in Valley now, but um, <laughs> he, 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 he makes it very easy. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty much catch and kick for me, and, and he does the rest. Um, I he'd, he'd a super final, in fairness. It was his, and like out the field, Cormac Timoney, probably gave one of the best best displays I've ever seen in, in a county final. So it, that'll tell you how good Niall was to, to pip him in with a man of the match performance. I was just about to say he wasn't he wasn't too happy with me again then I don't think. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. <laughs> we'll have to get on the county board for that one uh Niall see what that say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and I suppose, Pork, we, we could touch on to your cabin days. You made your cabin debut in uh, 2005 and finished up in 2013. So, how enjoyable was playing for the cabin seniors over the years, Pork? Yeah, I, like I really enjoyed um, my, my days with Cavan, and, and even I was even chatting to, to Niall um, about it last year about you know, we were after like because there were two players around the club getting called in, and, and you know, my opinion would always be to jump at it. Um, you know, there's it's, it's usually the lads who've never played with Cavan the, the lads saying not to go back in and concentrate on the club and all that but I really enjoyed and, and I, I I played through some lean time with Cavan um, you know we had, we had lots of unsuccessful years um, and uh, that's just the nature of it um, but no I, like especially when when you got through to, to championship days um, and we ha- I had some great days as well with Cavan you know, we beat Mead and, and Clonus on a sun sweltering day we you know um, we got a run out against Mayo, you know, Kerry, London, there was, there was great days down through the years. Um, obviously, it would have would have been great had we had we been more successful through the years, but, but um, oh, unfortunately, you can't control it all. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, kind of touching on to them early years as well, Park, and I always ask the former players, do you feel you maybe could have tagged on, tagged on a few National League sorts of titles with the kind of panel of players that we did have over the years, Park? 
Yeah, I, th- I think we could have. Um, you know, we 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 seem to kind of run into the wrong teams. You know, Ross Common kind of pipped us in, in in a couple of years. And um, but yeah, we we should we should we, we certainly because of the, the way we moved up and down the divisions. And um, it was it was a pity we never actually landed the national league titles that went with that. But um, you know, it, it's all about again. You just get to the, the way the league is set up. You you're already promoting when you get to the final. But I don't think we ever capitalize on those opportunities you know the big day the, the league finals to actually you know take them home and take home some silverware yeah yeah 100 percent and i suppose we can touch on 2013 i can always remember a great year obviously yourself and i were involved so great summer football in 2013 perk and we probably could have even been winning ultra title last year yeah, yeah, it was, it was it was great summer football. Um, I probably hadn't as much a, of a of a playing role that year. I I I'd started very well that year and then got got injured twice. I, I injured me hamstring after the first league game, or sorry, after the first challenge game I played with them, and then got back in the league and then did, did it again. Probably rushing to get back, but um, it was still I was still um in the panel and it, it was there was great buzz in those times and you know once once a team starts winning championship matches and uh, you can do all the team bonding and all that um but one, once you know a group of lads start winning championship matches together that's that's the best way to, to form a bond and, and that was probably the best run we had went on in a, in a good number of years with in, in 2013 yeah yeah and, not, and i suppose 2013 is successful year but what was the kind of deciding factor to, for you to finish up the calf in senior popular sport um, I, I suppose I, I had I had left. Um, I suppose I finished up in twenty thirteen, and then and had a good year following that with the, with the club. Um, and and very, I, I Terry had rang me to, to come back in, and I asked him for for a face to face, and he was very honest with me, and I was very honest with him, and I. I I suppose following that, he had kind of said I, I wasn't. I suppose fully back in his plans in terms of, in terms of playing, um, and I appreciate him been been me. I think mo- mo- most managers would have dramas me uh, to kind of get to commit um, and kind of give. Uh, whereas I had kind of played at that stage for seven or eight years, um, and so if I, if I wasn't, you know. Uh, I, I could see I could at that stage the younger lads were coming in and and if he was going to give them the nod that was that was completely his own decision but um, I wasn't uh, going to kind of sit again for the, to the back of the pecking order I'd given I'd given a good number of years to Cav and so I, I decided at that stage to opt out and concentrate with the club and if it ever after that I, I was more than willing to go back in it just really felt that way. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And uh, Pork, tell me about Shane Lowry. You won a few pound on him. <laughs> yeah, he, he's won me a few pounds actually down to the years. In fairness, and he's he's a knack for coming coming good at the right time. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 enjoyable kind of thing to 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 do outside of football, I suppose. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Pork, thanks a million for that. We can move on to yourself. Uh, Tom, obviously you uh, started off with Ballinian two seven, two intermediate titles, uh, one Ulster Championship, one Senior Championship, and with Cavan you've won a Leinster, one Leinster Junior title and uh, an All Ireland Junior title with Cavan. So, uh, you've nearly won it all, Tom. Fair play to you. Seven and seven, Tom Moore, you got the ball rolling with Ballinian. Yeah, uh, well, I suppose only for us, Padre would know intermediate. intermediates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at him. Um, I started back then. I was, I was. Uh, Fast little half back back then, that was, a lot has changed, but unfortunately, I was up against Podge and Pee Wee and uh, Mac and Ernie for a spot, so that didn't work out um, too well. Yeah, it was great then, so, like, it was great for me and Niall coming in straight away, first year, winning intermediate, winning Ulster, like it seemed like it was going to happen every year, and then it, it didn't, unfortunately, but it took a couple more years to, to get something else. but. Yeah, it was, it was great to get in with it, with them old advice that you were looking at for five or ten years before that to get yeah. playing with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose, as you said, in your debut year to win an intermediate title and an Ulster Championship as well, uh, Tom, uh, not a bad way to start. Yeah, no, uh, as I said, we, we, we kind of thought that was going to happen every year, but um, <laughs> didn't work out that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose, kind of, kind of pushing on from that as well, like how competitive did you make the Intermediate Championship over the years, Tom? Because obviously you won one in 2007 and you obviously won the second one in 2020. So over the years, Tom, uh, how competitive do you think it all was? 
Yeah, it's, as Pudge said, it's very tough to win it. Um, like two years ago, when we went back down to intermediate, like everybody thought, you know, oh, Bell and Yan might sail through it. But, uh, you know, you come a scupper against some of the teams that, you know, might be fighting relegation at the end of the year. But, you know, they can pull it off in, in a group game and, and knock out some of the big guns. So, as Podge says, it could be eight or ten teams could win it any year or just go on a bit of a run, you know. So, uh, luckily last year and, and 2007, we got over the line. But it's, it's I'm not saying it's easier than senior, but it's it's definitely a lot more teams can, can win it, you know. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And I suppose, obviously, starting off in 07, Tom, like, is this something you always wanted to do, play for the band, you know, senior footballers when you were young, lad? Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking at uh, boys growing up, like, we were sitting back watching Podge going off playing for Ireland and playing for Calvin and everything, like, you know, you just want to, you, you just want to get on the field and play with them sort of boys that's, that's been playing for a couple of years and, you know, uh, I suppose, we were after winning a good bit of underage, so we kind of wanted to keep that success going and striving for, for winning titles and things like that and winning finals. So, um, just mad to keep going and mad to play football, you know, that's about all. Yeah. Just mad yeah. to get into it. Yeah, yeah. And how special of a club is Banya to you, Tom? Obviously, I've heard, I think, in the speeches, uh, you're a great club man, you train the underage, you're, it's, you're, you, plur- you, bleed, uh, you bleed yellow, Tom. Yeah, yeah, I suppose uh, that that might like that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, as um, when I was growing up, there was always there was always people down helping out, training underage. You know, as, as Podge said, Paddy the Bone was there, and there's there's even people there might have no kids, but just mad into football. You know, so um, I just see it if if I have a free evening, go down and help out, and um, as. You know, they they might be looking at us on a Saturday and Sunday evening, uh, playing for the seniors. And you know, if you have a free evening, go down and help them out, and uh, hopefully bring more success to Belgia over the years. And and hopefully maybe play with a couple of them at senior level, and maybe get another senior title out of it. <laughs> nourish them, Tom. Nourish them. And I yeah. suppose, can you, winning, the, winning that uh, championship in 2007, how much did that push you on as a footballer, Tom? Because at the end of the day, to win a championship in your de- debut season as a Ballina footballer, that's seriously impressive. Yeah, um, to push you on, like, uh, as I said, I went in at a half back and couldn't get a game for love nor money. So <laughs> I, I had to change my game. I, I ended up a corner forward the next year. So um, it's just, I, I just had to adapt my game because of the quality of players we had at the time and you know it didn't matter who we were playing we, we could we could go toe to toe with them and match them and if I wanted to get playing I had to, I had to work out a way of getting into the team and thank god I did 12 months later like you know yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, and obviously winning the uh, Ulster Club Championship two thousand seven as well, uh, Tom, and unforeseen kind of uh, territory for a lot of Calvin clubs even to get that far. So, how special was that to you? Yeah, that was massive. Um, as as you said, no no team had, had really got that far, so we were kind of in unknown territory. We kind of didn't know what we were doing, you know. So, um, great to win it. Like it's just it's unbelievable to win it. Uh, to win an intermediate, but as Pudge says. It, that that threw the shackles off and let us play exciting football and good football and you know, it's just lucky like you know got over the first round struggled over the first round and after that we really went to town on a couple of teams and and it's a great journey like great for the town big buzz around the town everybody is every couple of weeks getting on a bus heading up to Casement heading up to Oma play games like you wouldn't see it unfortunately we didn't see it last year like but it's it gives a, it gives a great lift to the town too. Yeah, it does. Absolutely, absolutely. And so kind of pushing on the years ahead, the uh, Senior Championship uh, in 2013 as well, Tom, a serious, serious win against the Gales and probably one of the best performances seen in the Senior Final over the last couple of years. So, Tom, uh, McNaff, magnificent day for the club. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I don't think we still get the credit we deserve for the performance in the final. You know, a lot, a lot of people still say the Gales lost it, but um, as Podge said, we, we led for the majority of the game. We just you know, every man won their battle on the field and uh, went toe to toe with it. I mean, I'm sure it's great, great, great week after too. 
<laughs> and absolutely, and uh, a, par- a rumor has it you spoiled Shawnee Johnson's homecoming party from Kildare as well, Tom. So how dare you? <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff, and obviously like a superb performance and just unbelievable. So Tom, when you were kind of getting over the line, and obviously it was Saint Pork the week leading into that game, kind of what was said just to kind of kind of me- give you that momentum to get over the line against probably the best team in Cavan over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, I don't really remember much of, of the build-up. I'm probably away with the fairies, you know, worrying about myself, my own game. Um, as Pudge said, there was, no, there was no real tactics to it. It was just, you know, uh, get, get your ma- matchups right and, and win your battles and, and hope to be there with 15 minutes to go. And it just worked out. It worked out all right for us. The Gales made a couple of changes, all right positional changes for their matchups as well which suited us too um, but we just used, used Breffy Park as, as much as we could big open field, use the space hit Nile with the ball and, and get runners off and get to take their scores like you know it's it wasn't rocket science on that day it was just hard work yeah and I'm interested kind of, to hear your perspective on maybe like you not getting credit for the 2013 win, Tom, because people were to watch it back. It was a terrific performance. So I suppose, you know, what, what kind of makes you feel that? Like, have people not kind of said, oh, the gale, it was the Gales to lose? Or what was the verdict and all that? Uh, just over the years, it said you stole it or, or, you know, the Gales made a couple of changes that kind of weakened their team. But um, I suppose it doesn't really matter. We, we have the medal approved, but, you know, it's... Uh, we know ourselves that we went into the final kind of, you know, on top of our game and it was just two teams going toe-to-toe and we come out the better of it. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Terrific, terrific win. And year after that, you won a Leinster title and an All-Ireland title with the Cavan Juniors, Tom. So, uh, unbelievable scenes. Yeah, um, so it's, great, it's great to have in the back pocket. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole pile of training or anything like that. It was a kind of group of 30, 35 lads meeting up maybe every two or three weeks to go off and play a game <coughs> under Terry Highland there. Like he just he knew kinda knew how to win that that uh, Leinster championship. He had won it a few times with Cavan and, and just as it as it kept going it was it was great crack and you know it wasn't it wasn't as serious as as the senior uh, outfit but and um, once you got four drawn into it, it, it was taken as serious. And but you know, lads were playing kind of relaxed football, and and you had, you had some of the good, best footballers in the in the county that just wasn't making the senior panel was was on that panel and playing good football. And look, it was it was good crack. We got a we got a weekend away at Scotland that we play them in the semi final. So <laughs> that was like you know it's it's good. good. <laughs> brilliant stuff, brilliant, brilliant stuff. And uh, I suppose, kind of, as you say, like, is the junior thing kind of taken seriously enough? Like, should we be taking it more seriously, Tom? Because at the end of the day, if we can win the trophies, take it a bit more seriously, you know, we can get more uh, silverware for Cavan. So, you know, would your mindset be we should be taking it more seriously? Yeah, well, uh, look, at it. I think back then it was used more as a stepping stone for lads coming out of maybe under twenties or or coming from club football into, into the senior panel if they played a bit of the junior the, the year before, you know, it, it gives them a taste of what it was like. So, look, it's an option. Uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of games with McKenna Cup and League and everything like that and in-house games and all. Lads get lots of football with the seniors, but if if there was, if you were to find a couple of gems, you know, by playing in the junior championship, you know, it, it, it might be worth it because there was probably five or six lads came off that team Straight into that senior panel, so you know if okay, it's something to be looked at, it, it it could be useful. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, two years later, you obviously broke on to the uh, Cavan seniors as well, Tom. And so, what was that experience like? Because I suppose everyone would be off the opinion that was probably Cavan's strongest team in recent years. Yeah, for for me, it was a whole new experience. Uh, it's part of a minor panel, but it it, it had evolved. Over the years, like and it was, it was very serious. Three, four nights a week, like I wouldn't be used to that. It took me a while probably to get up to the to the pace of it, but yeah, it was, it was, it was great. And that year, probably, you know, uh, 
bet in the semi-final against Tyrone, I think, in a, in a replay. Probably unlucky not to come through that. Um, we had going well. Probably David Gibney on top of his game as well at full forward. Probably unmarkable in the in the first game. I think he carried an injury into the second game and, and probably that kind of you know, carrying a man with a bit of an injury kind of scuppered us that day, but yeah, fortunately we didn't get over the line. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Obviously, yeah, you led uh, the Mighty Ballon to the 2020 uh, title and everyone can, all, everyone can always remember your speech after the final as well, Tom, so a very proud day for yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, like I, since I've been probably 14, 15, I'm looking at Podge there, Captain Russ for the majority of the time, probably bar one or two years, and someone that I look up to, and even like last year, I was taking advice from him nearly every week. So, um, you know, you know, as 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 you're playing with the senior team, that's it's a it's a goal to, to get captain and your 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 club team. So, um, it was just it was brilliant to be able to lead them to to an intermediate championship. You know, it's different than maybe just going out and playing a couple of league games and getting bet in the first round of the championship. When you when you, when you can lead your club to an intermediate championship, it's it's something special. Yeah, yeah, definitely very really shout out for the year that we had it as well. And I suppose I'm interested here your, your perspective three, four nights a week with the Cavan setup. What did you make of that kind of professional setup? Because obviously Pork and Niall were with the Cavan setup for years. So you know, breaking into that Cavan senior setup, uh, Tom, it was probably tight going. Yeah, as I said, it took me a while to get up to the up the pace of it like I wouldn't be used to any gym sessions or anything like that or I'm doing extra sessions it, it probably <laughs> that's what probably helped me back a bit you know um, different sessions yeah well, different sessions yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah look it was great the professionalism and all that like I've taken a lot from that uh, over the last couple of years you know just the conditioning and, and keeping your body right and all in in the off season and everything like that. It's uh, you have to be you have to be well able to train now when you go in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. As we all well know, and Tom, thanks a million for that. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by OrcaRetro.com. Use my promo code Jamie. Of course, the podcast to get fifteen percent off on the website. We can move on to yourself, Niall. Obviously, you uh, made the breakthrough for Balinya Seniors in uh, two thousand seven. You've won two intermediate titles, won senior championship uh, with uh, Balinya. So similar to the lads. So uh, great times yourself, Niall. And uh, two thousand seven, uh, great winning intermediate. Yeah, it was. Um, I actually had. Uh, the year before, Bernard Morris was over us, and I think I was only 15 at the time, but I started playing a few junior matches, and he used to uh, he used to throw me in goals for the first half and then bring me out corner forward the second half, so that was my first kind of introduction to the senior team. Um, I think that was definitely, I think that was 2006, or it could have been the start of 2007, but yeah, as I said, Bernard was over us, and um, coming into that team, like Bernard would have been... Uh, a huge kind of role model as someone growing up watching football the whole time and it was um it was it was massive and you wanted to come in and kind of and, and impress him and the other kind of senior players on the team for example as we said Podge and even Andy Gain and them boys that would have played for Cavan for years so it was um it was a it was a huge kind of honor to start start playing Ballon in two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah absolutely and I suppose Niall as we've seen the lads is was it something you always wanted to do to represent the Balinya senior footballers? Obviously, in two thousand seven, when it came knocking around, probably some of the proudest days of your life. Yeah, well, I suppose at underage we were after. Um, we had we had very good underage teams, and we all kind of come up within a couple of years of each other. Um, so we knew we had a, we had a, we had a great group of young lads there that were pushing on, and I suppose for myself and Thomas and them coming in. Um, it was all very new to us, and we, we didn't kind of have any baggage uh, going into 2007. Podge was saying there, we would have been going watching Balanya lose two intermediate finals, I think it was 2002 and 2006. So I suppose it was kind of harder for them like to get over the line intermediate, being there for so long and being favourites. But for myself, coming into 2007, it was just... You know, play off the cuff, and it was enjoyable. And it was um, when you're scoring, it was like you thought that it was easy and early, and you, you had no fear going into a match. Like we had no, I had no fear anyway. Like 
any baggage of winning the intermediate. So I think um, that was a big thing for us, and we just we really enjoyed. I really, I really enjoyed 2007 and um, actually playing. Yeah, and I was saying to Thomas as well, Niall, obviously to win an uh, intermediate title in your first year for the Ballyan Senior Footballers, Niall, and obviously to win an Ultra Championship as well, uh, not a bad way to start. No, it was, uh, as first years go, you couldn't couldn't really get much better now. Um, as you said earlier, um, I don't I don't think, I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any other team in, in Cavan have won any Ulsters in club. No, I don't so, think so. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. so, yeah, as Podge alluded to earlier on about um, the buzz around them Ulster matches, and, uh, even meeting up in the mornings, uh, going to the games, um, I would have experienced it probably that year. I was um, I was with Cavan Miners that year, but um, had very little uh, game time. I think in the Ulster Championship that year, I came on for the last two minutes. So it was a huge probably confidence booster getting started with Benny as seniors that year and going on the one we, don't, we did. And um, yeah, I still remember that Ulster final day. It was. There's a couple of thousand supporters in the stand in Healy Park, and like it's a, it's a game probably you'll, you'll, you'll never never forget. And um, on, a, on a personal level, I was delighted that I could uh, get a goal and a couple of points that day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, uh, now, what does Ballyhea mean to you as a club as well? Because as Pork and uh, Thomas were saying there, it's a special club, and I suppose you're doing it for the town of Ballyhea when you win all these championships. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I suppose it wouldn't be a massive club, and uh, I suppose all the players that are there now, we kind of have a good group of players around the one age. There's a there's a special bond between us, and whether it's nights out after championship games, ever, and there's always a um, brilliant crack, and I think that that's where the our team kind of ethic and bonding and all comes from. Um, them kind of them kind of days, and um, especially last year, I suppose. Or this year and last year, you can see how much it means to everyone in the club. Um, getting back together um, for these training sessions, uh, especially last year. I remember the first couple of sessions; it was um, brilliant crack, like lads just slagging each other. Um, trainings were great out in the sun in the summer, and uh, it's just where you want to be. Like, and you look forward to going to train and meeting the lads and and just having the crack with them, basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose to kind of win that uh, title, uh, Ulster, Ulster title in 2007 Ireland, you know, could, could you really believe it, uh, you know, getting there or winning it? And obviously, as we were saying, no cabin club has really gone to that. We've got the finals in recent years, lost them. So, Niall, uh, to actually get over the line in one, terrific stuff. Yeah, um, I suppose in that Ulster run, um, the game that kind of stands out to me most is that first game against uh, Ty Holland. We played them in Breffney Park and... It, as games go and all the games I've played for Ballina, yeah, it's one of the, the top few that I remember because we were um they were strongly fancied for the for the Ulster Intermediate that year and they came with I think they had three or four could have had three modern seniors at the time. And we were down, I think, six points at half time. And Podge was saying about the Hollands game earlier on, it's definitely in the same sort of league as that. Uh, we came out and put in an unbelievable performance the second half. And I don't think we look back from there then. That was the quarter final, semi final against Farmer Gales. We actually got over them all right and we won the we won the final at a at a canter really. We were we were well ahead the whole match. So it was that game against Thai Holland. And it was just taking it one game at a time after that. It's it's a short competition, obviously, three three games. So that first game was the one that kind of really, really stood out and sticks in my mind as a catalyst for going on to win that All Star. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Without a shadow of a doubt, and I suppose winning breeds habits, and I suppose pushing on from that. And I obviously, and you're talking, we were saying, with lads, uh, 2013 senior championship uh, medal for yourselves as well, tagging on against a very favourite Cavan Gales team. Now, a great win that day. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Now it was probably the the best day of my life, really, if I, if I look back at it. But um, it's only it's only after the game where you see um the reaction, I suppose, of all all the the older supporters. Given the fact that it was our our first ever senior championship in the club's history, and um, you see kind of older men crying, and it was um, it really hit home then how much of a an achievement it was. 
because I suppose in the lead up to it, you don't, as you said, you don't really be thinking about any part. You just think about the next game and the next whatever twenty minutes of a match. So it was after that game. It was an an unbelievable feeling and an outpouring of emotion after it, which was um, which is great. Yeah, I suppose what was as, as Pork and Tomix were saying there, but what was kind of said in the week leading up to that, and I suppose even getting your head right for it, and obviously kind of putting in the performance they did put in, uh, Niall, you know, you really need, did need to be at the top of your game against probably one of the best teams in Cav in the last 20 years. Yeah, as, as Podge was saying there earlier on, um, we had a rough start to that year, but as the year went on, um, we, we got a lot more together and our performances were um, were very good in the lacking game and the crucial all game we were well ahead and we actually let them get back into the game but trains were going very well and um, Kieran Riley was it was a brilliant manager brilliant with the players and Darren McCarthy you'd have to mention him he um he actually was suspended from the quarter final and he took a lot of trainings uh, between the quarter final and final and I think that had a had a major impact on us um, in our preparation for the final and making us kind of believe um, that we could actually achieve what we achieved. That as well as the fact um, I'd always kind of remember a couple of talks Podge gave us in the kind of week up to the game or the maybe the week before the game or was that Friday night. Um, just saying about forget about the occasion um, Forget about your fitness. Don't be trying to hold yourself back at all. It's a final. So if we can stay in the final at half time and you get towards the end of the game, adrenaline alone will um will keep you going until the finish line. And I think everyone took that on board. And it was just a matter in them couple of weeks of making every single person in the panel believe that we could we could actually uh, win that senior championship. Because there was a core group of players that probably believed, but everyone mightn't have believed like because you look at the Gales and you look at their players they have, they have an unbelievably strong team so it was just gaining that belief and I think as a club we, we always do have the belief on any given day that we can we can put it up to the to the best teams yeah absolutely and I suppose it's a belief thing as well uh, and I obviously because we, we all know the strength of power that they do have so kind of when you were getting over the final line and kind of putting in the performance like what impressed you most about that performance obviously if you have watched back on YouTube like what has impressed or what did impress you about uh, Banyal's performance that day? Definitely our first um, first 20 minutes because obviously hugely important if Cabin Gales get a good start uh, the forwards that they had, we talked about them earlier on, they could just blow you away. So it was that first 20 minutes and just the aggression that we kind of brought to the game and just, you know, every man just taking ownership for himself and, and the battle he was in and trying to get the, the better of his man. And I think after the first 25 minutes, we were maybe three or four points up, which which basically gave us the, the, the base for the rest of that game. Once we went in at half time, we were like, we were probably in a position where we had talked about where we wanted to be. We were actually probably ahead of what we even talked about. So it was just everyone, of course, at that stage believed that it could be done. Um, and from there to the end, it was a bit nervy there near the end, but we, um, I had no doubt at, at any stage in that game that, that we weren't going to win. Yeah, and would you kind of echo uh, Tom's words saying, like, you know, they just get enough credit for that 2013 win, Niall, because at the end of the day, is we're underdogs. Um, it'd be a major regret of mine that um, we didn't actually go on and win another one, to be honest with you. I think um, the year after, um, the year after, I think we actually played better football in 2014. And uh, I think we lost to Kingsford in the semi final by a point that year. But suppose looking back now, it's one of the games that is a, is a huge regret in, in my career anyway. Because I think we it would have been Cavan Gales in the final again. We would have had um, we would have had a very good chance of taking a and taking a double. So um, I suppose when you only win one, people are going to say, "Look, it was a flash in the pan." But um, I think around that time we we had we had a fantastic group of players, and we definitely missed out on an opportunity to win maybe two. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And pushing on from that, obviously last year, Noel, uh, twenty twenty, uh, intermediate champions. Obviously, man, a lot of performance from yourself. So uh, a special day for the club. And uh, 
COVID let loose after that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, in, the lead, in the lead up to that, that championship, um, I was just absolutely delighted uh, to be out in the field and playing because um, I'd come back. We come back from COVID and training was going great, and I, I did a ankle injury uh, a couple of weeks before them couple of league matches, and in I got back for that first league game, and then the hamstring went. And that fourth league game back, and I missed another five weeks. So at the time, I thought I'm not, I'm not going to play any championship here. So while doing the rehab, I was like, if I get back, I'm just going to enjoy football and and give it me all. And I suppose them cup, I only played four games, but they're probably the, the four the most enjoyable games I've I've played with the club. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I suppose kind of going out every day. Obviously, you're a uh, main attacker for Balnea. So, neither do, do, do you feel that kind of added pressure on yourself for Balnea when you're front uh, shooting lights out? Uh, no, not really. No, and I never really look at it that way. Um, I always look at it that we have we have lots of help there in the forward line. Having the bun, I suppose, the last two years has been uh, uh, top scorer. Like so, um, we have a couple of uh, very very good forwards, and you have. Thomas De Bone in the half forward line and David Finnegan, obviously his experienced player has been there years. So I think we've like you yeah, have a lot of good help in forward. So you never I never think about it as as any pressure on me or anything like that. You just go out and do your best and if it's not good enough, that's just the way it is. Yeah. I want those like an intermediate title uh, meaning to a club like Balin, obviously as, as you're saying, it's it's a small town, so to, you know, to get over the line in twenty twenty and two thousand seven also clubs as well, uh, Niall, you know, it's it's uh, it does the town a lot of good. Yeah, I suppose um, with, uh, you're just talking about intermediates there, but um, 2007 was the only year I played intermediate until last year. So, um, senior is 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 really where you want to be at. But obviously, winning anything anything with the club is uh, is special. The one in 2007, as we said, we were intermediate for a long kind of good few years before that, and. We were kind of favourites every year, and it just wasn't working out. So um, I think when we were down the last time, uh, we knew that we needed to get up fairly quickly because you didn't want to be caught down in a, a kind of dogfight and intermediate for too long. So we were just kind of fortunate we could get up um, in so, such a short period. It was only two years we were down there. And I think at the end of that intermediate last year, um, we kind of showed that um, nearly we were too strong for an intermediate last year we um the last three or four games we really played some great football and uh, were able to blow a few teams away yeah yeah definitely so as now we can touch on to your uh, Calvin days you got the ball rolling in 2011 after a very successful under 21 campaign campaign for Calvin winning an under 21 also title and getting to an all-iron final against Galway but Niall that under 21 title in 2011 an absolutely unbelievable achievement yeah I suppose um Everyone always looked back at it as the as the catalyst for like all the teams that kind of followed. Like you won three or four, in a row. was it three in a row after a four in a row, and the miners had a great win. So to be that to be that breakthrough team was um, was very special, and it was I suppose you're coming from a place though where no Calvin teams had won for years, and you were trying to that team were trying to change the kind of culture of Calvin football and. Uh, we are, I still remember that group. It was uh, probably one of the best groups of I've, I've ever played with, and every lad in the team was such good friends, and with all with a common goal of trying to 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 win something with Cavan. And um, yeah, that day and, uh, that day we won that uh, also in twenty one was was an unbelievable feeling. Yeah, absolutely, and it's supposed to kind of get the ball rolling with the under twenty ones as well, Niall, and just a terrific night and just a really good uh, start for this uh, kind of successful Cavan team that we do have now, I suppose now. Yeah, I suppose um, we didn't follow on obviously in senior uh, up until I suppose the last two years. There's still um, a good few of them uh, under twenty ones from a couple of years after my team, but I suppose it would have been a big regret looking back now that. Not more of that team, the 2011, um, played with Cavan seniors, I suppose, and pushed on. I think there was only maybe, at the start, obviously, we played one or two years, but there wasn't many um, kind of players that played maybe five, six years. And you only have two of them left now, which is, um, which is unfortunate for whatever reasons. 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm interested in kind of hearing your perspective on that as well, Niall. Why do you feel over the years maybe Cav and have kind of had a lot of players leave the panel and coming and going? So we, we at the end of the day, we have had a big overturn of players, Niall. Yeah, I think um, I think well, like Terry Highland was with us uh, 2011, and I think the years he was with Cav and there was a lot of continuity with the with the with the team. Like a lot of players were staying them three or four years. I think it was. Nearly after he left, a lot of lads just started drifting away, and um, there was just too much kind of turnover of players. Then you had new players in and out every year. But I think in them years under under Terry, that them three or four years, that a lot of the, the team was fairly um, set, and you had your you you kind of had um, if you know what I'm saying, the kind of same similar team or the same lads that stayed around them a couple of years. But it was kind of after that that I think a lot of lads kind of dropped off. For whatever reason, and that's, I can't really put my finger on it, but work, travel, name, you name it, like um, a lot of lads moved away. Like sure, Oshin Minor, for example, he's played one year with Cavan Seniors, and he's been travelling since. Like so, um, he was he would have been he would have played for Cavan for years. He's just an example um, of the lads in that under twenty one team, the way they went. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I suppose uh, to get to an All Ireland final in two thousand eleven for the under twenty ones, Niall. Crow Park, Pipe Not Day, probably one of the best days of your life. It was, yeah, it was um, the build up to that. Result. Was, was that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Bar the> result. <laughs> Bar the result. It was all going well for 13 minutes. Um, yeah, no, the build up to the game was, was unbelievable. Like, I suppose we didn't, with under 21, you don't have much time to think about games. They're all coming, ticking fast. Um, I'm sure, our. our all Ireland semi final last year was played three days after the Ulster final, so it was all very quick. We, we only had the two weeks then before the All Ireland final, but yeah, the build up was brilliant. We had we had an unbelievable management team that year. Um, uh, Joe McCarthy, Lord of Mercy on him, he was brilliant. Uh, Anthony Ford, um, Paul Dolan, the work he did behind the scenes for that team, it was just a, a different level than we'd ever seen before. Like the, the work, for example, Paul, or Porrick Dolan did uh, in analysis and breaking down teams was was something we never seen before and and motivational videos before matches uh, analyzing other teams like we were we were definitely the best drilled or best uh, drilled under twenty one team in the country um, and I believe that but uh, obviously going into the game we we felt we were had a huge chance of winning it but um, they just I don't know. Aidan Mendy got to us, started well, I think it was three points all, and then they got kind of two goals in quick succession, and it was just um, kind of damage limitation after that. But I think, well, I don't know what it was in the second half, but it was kind of point for point. But you we were um, obviously very disappointed coming to the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, months after that, Niall, you were drafted into the uh, Cavan Senior setup, and uh, your debut year, I suppose, uh, it probably ended abruptly against Longford, but obviously, yeah, great to make the great one in 2011, now. Yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. Um, I did. I hadn't trained much, obviously, with the seniors in 2011. I only played um, the last league match. It was against Loud that year, and then it was straight into championship. Um, so I hadn't much time with the team, but um, I think Cavan seniors around then were, were, were kind of at a low point and we were kind of rebuilding phase. Um, especially in 2012, like where I think it was nine of that under 21 team were bought, brought in. And in my opinion, a lot, a lot of experienced players were probably let go, which which wasn't kind of the right way to go about things either. You, you need your kind of mix of youth and experience. So I think that kind of backfired um, on us a bit. And it was a bit too much maybe to expect off... Um, kind of 20, 21 year olds as well to kind of try and nearly carry a senior team but I think yeah them, them couple of years 2011 and 2012 weren't the best kind of years to be to be starting your senior career Cavan yeah yeah absolutely and I suppose in 2013 Niall for the years after that was a great year as I was saying the pork as well and you were part and parcel of that uh, four line for Cavan so uh, what was it like 2013 the summer of football Derry, London Kerry Good times to yourself, Yeah, it was um it was um back to the kind of last year of under twenty one, that, that whole management team were in and 
Um, there was a great feeling around the panel. Um, there was huge work going in, and yeah, we, the run we went on was um, was huge. Um, especially I suppose one game that stands out um, for me is the morning game, as it's uh, again a huge kind of disappointment, and I think one that we we definitely let slip because. That was a team I think we could we could have won those the championship that year, and that's that's the one you look back on in all my years probably playing with Cav and that um that I'd say we had the best chance of winning also was two thousand and thirteen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And obviously you're you're saying off air to me in two thousand sixteen you, you had to sit the year out through injury. So uh, what was the story that year? Because obviously I was saying to Tom, two thousand sixteen, we probably had Cav in the strongest team in recent years. Yeah, it was a, a huge disappointment, obviously, missing out 2016 because I think that every the, all the best players in, in the county were in that year and playing, and there was a great buzz about the panel. Um, but I think it was, it was the first league game against Brown, um I tore my groin, and I wasn't really sure at the time. I didn't, I didn't think it was as serious as it was. But then I, the week after, we went for a scan, and it was uh, the groin, groin was tore off the bone, and Philip Carlin was telling me that it'd be a whole year job. He was like, it was, it's the, probably the second worst injury you can do. So he said, after tearing your hamstring off the bone. So yeah, it was a, it was a massive disappointment, but uh, just got the head down and, and, and did rehab for the year. Like I was still kind of hopeful looking back. It was stupid now that I might make it back in championship for that. But no, it was, um, it was, uh, it was a rough year now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And after 2013, we followed up with success in the uh, league final against us coming in 2014, Niall, and obviously you were, I think, full forward that day. So what was that experience like against uh, them wankers was coming? <laughs> <laughs> the league final we lost 2014. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, again, um, as uh, Podge was saying, uh, a massive a massive bogey team for us, and we're probably sick of the sight of them, but... Um, Again, that was a, a game where I never thought, even in the first half of that, that we we were ever going to lose. We we had, I think we had a couple of goal chances in the first half that we let slip, and then the goal they got was just a, a freak kind of accident. Um, I can't remember who it was. He was coming down, went for a point, lobbed into the top corner, and uh, yeah, just uh, last 15, 20 minutes, then we were, we just couldn't get the scores we needed. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a tough one to take now, um, and again, a massive kind of regret because it was a it was a great chance to get silver out of Cavan Seniors. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I suppose pushing on from that, uh, Niall, in uh, 2017, to uh, came into your head to finish up with the uh, Cavan Seniors. What was the uh, culminating factor for uh, Niall McDermott to finish with the Cavan Seniors? I suppose it was. Um, I don't know. I, I I suppose coming back after missing the whole year in 16. Um, it was still kind of a, a kind of, and the groin just wasn't right still from the year before, and I suppose it, it just started getting getting more and more frustrated as kind of the year went on. I was like, wasn't a hundred percent starter. I might start some games. I might be a sub in some games. Um, it was Madden McLean's first year as well, and it, it was kind of very new, and it was new players in the panel. But the thing was myself, I just didn't feel um, you know, in in previous years. Every other year I did with Cavan Senior, I absolutely loved it. I think that year I just it turned me off because I didn't didn't enjoy the year. Um, you were putting in as we were saying earlier on, you're putting in serious hours, and you just don't feel like you're asking yourself why you're doing it. And I think I think that was the kind of reason. I, the last game we played was against Tipperary, and I was brought on that day. I think in the second half, uh, and I was brought off before the end. So that was in the year we lost to Tipperary. So I think that was a big factor too. I was like, um, I think I, I just said to myself after that, this, I don't think it's for me anymore. And uh, the year after, I was in my final year in college, uh, doing a PE degree down in Limerick. So it was, that was another kind of reason the year after I said, uh, I, don't, I think I'm going to take a year out now. And after that, I was away traveling for a year. So it just, it just never came around again to... Uh, to be on the cabin seniors and it's obviously a disappointment like because for them five or six years it was uh i absolutely loved playing it and i loved the lads i played with and it was an enjoyable experience 
yeah, 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 that's without a shadow of doubt. And I suppose uh, Pork, we can we can uh, start with yourself here. Um, Ka- uh, Cavan's under or Ulster twenty twenty success uh, last year, and uh, a terrific uh, achievement for uh, Mickey and the lads. Yes, yeah, was last year. I think uh, I don't know where everyone else. But I was up, I was up in Dublin watching myself, and it was it was in the middle of a, the gloomiest few days in terms of lockdown. But uh, it was brilliant. Like it was just um, it, was, it was just great to like every. If anywhere you go, you just you're proud to be a Cavan person. So it's it was a barren few years before that where you're kind of you know the amount of lads are slagging at Donegal. So it's great to actually for for Cavan people because we're we're very proud of you know it's everyone remembers when you're in college. Everyone knows you're the lad from Cavan, or when you're going to work, you're the lad from Cavan. We just need to carry that badge of honour, and not like other counties who kind of it so it's great then to actually you know I, I had messages even coming through to me congratulating me from you know from all over the world uh, and it's just because we're we're kind of agreeing that way we're kind of wired differently it is it, it as I said it runs through our DNA so yeah it certainly lifted my spirits dur- during a very a very glum few weeks uh, last last November and um, it was a pity obviously we weren't able to, to fully celebrate it but um, it was brilliant for the lads it was um, you know they, they were probably written off after their league campaign and um, but like most of these things they would have they would have obviously built one you know once they got that first win against monaghan and um, nothing builds morale like like championship wins so obviously the, the the confidence they had within the group was very different to what everyone else outside the group was feeling so um it was obviously something very special going on in there and they could feel it and, and each match that was obviously growing um, and they knew that you know, even when you hear their, their interviews after, they were very. It struck me just how confident they were against Donegal, given that they would have been to, to any to any kind of outsider or pundit. They were rank outsiders, and um, but they were full yeah. work. Their victory, they, they put in a performance that uh, completely merited the, the win, and, and probably should have even been by more. I actually think that um, the referee doing us no no favors that way that day. And thankfully, will not ruin it. Uh, it would have been some regret to think. A referee robbed us of of a win that we fully fully deserved. Yeah, and uh, what about yourself, uh, Tom? Uh, Cavan's Ulster twenty twenty success. Yeah, yeah, it's just brilliant. Um, I remember watching the last maybe five ten minutes, kind of just in a daze, you know, thinking, ah, oh, Donegal is going to come back and kick a couple of points here and catch us out, but. I was, uh, it was unbelievable. Like it, I was only very young back in '97. Like barely remember it, but uh, just the feeling, like it's and like, not even involved with the team or anything like that. And and as Pod says, you're a proud Cavan man. I, I assume everybody was the same as me. The, the feeling you had after that final was just unbelievable. The joy that it brought to everybody, you know, meeting people on the street, everybody kind of threw the shoulders back and the chest out, you know, you were an Ulster champion, even though you, you weren't part of the team, like, so, yeah, it's just, it was unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, yourself, Niall, obviously, I know, I know you were called in at the end of last year, but uh, Cavan's under 20, or Ulster, 2020 success? Yeah, unbelievable, um, unbelievable few, probably, weeks leading up to it, uh, in a time where, where I suppose everyone kind of needed something, um, everyone you talk to even says about it now what, what a lift that it brought to everyone um i think it was six nearly six weeks in a row cabin was on the telly and it was something you look forward to nearly every week that the, the game at the weekend and just the manner i suppose and the manner in which they won it as well like coming back against monaghan coming back against down 10 points down and then that day against Donegal, like everyone was saying, look, if you give Donegal a lead like that, it'll be, be lights out. But from start to finish that day, Cavan, Cavan were, were all over them. And um, yeah, I think uh, when the final whistle went, um, I'm living with a couple of people here in Cavan, um, the television was nearly broke, we were jumping around that much. But I think about five minutes after, um, Kieran Fitzpatrick from Shannon Gales lives beside us uh, down the road here. And sure, two minutes later, he heard these massive bangs on the window, and we open it, and he's there with, there with a Calvin flag waving. At him. <laughs> his two, his two kids are running up, up and down the street here with a big massive Calvin flag, and uh, just that, that just showed to me like what, what, uh, what football meant to everyone in, in the, in the county. He was saying as well, if I remember right, he was saying the night of, 
the Ulster under 21, uh, our Ulster under 21 final, he would have been involved as well. Garoad McKernan or something gave him a bottle of champagne. And he was saying he's kept it in the house and never touched it since. And he said he was going to go down that night to the trail and, and hand him back the bottle of champagne that he gave him in 2011. But it was just, yeah, now that, that then took the minutes and, and him coming to the house just kind of epitomised what uh, what every cabin supporter felt. And as, as Thomas was saying there, it's... Um, you can walk around with your with your chest out now to Cavan and it, it it made everyone proud. What a lovely gesture by uh, Cavan Gales club man Garo McCarran. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought you were going to say now that he's popped up in the champagne that night. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we, we'll start off with a couple of quick fire questions. But for for, uh, for starters, uh, Pork, who would have been the best player you played with and against over the years? Um, probably the best player I, I shared a pitch with was Michael Meehan from Galway. Um, I, I went to NUIG down there, and he was he was probably at the peak of his powers in those college years. He was, you know, he's after winning I think two or three tro- uh, All Irelands with St Jarlets, and then. Um, you know, he just we I, we lost to Cork IT our first Brandon uh, Sigerson match. We scored one eleven. He scored one ten, and he passed the last point to cross the the goals for a tap and well, a footer over the bar. So, yeah, he, he was probably the best I've I've seen in in action. And uh, what about the best player you played with or against? Uh, with uh, or against? Yeah. Uh, well, Peter Cam was probably the best. He was probably finished when I played against him, but um, he still had all the skills. He, um, you know, he. Took, I remember we put my uh, uh, Mickey Hannon, our best man marker on him, and he just, even at his age, he just was at, at a different level. And um, he just, he used class. Everything he did, he just, it, it felt like he was playing an under sixteen match. And um, just the way he, he was able to talk to players around him, moved them around the pitch, find space, had such confidence in his own ability to, to shoot from pretty much anywhere and um, yeah he, he was he was probably the best I've, I've played against yeah absolutely and uh, Tom the best player you played with against over the years um, I'm not going to go for uh, into county boys I'm playing with that many of them I'd say <laughs> probably probably with is probably either the boys there or Podge or, or Niall you know depending uh, Niall digs has had a lot of holes there with, with scores, but I'd say Podge probably more so because uh, he just rallies the whole team. Like, you know, might throw his head in where he shouldn't put his foot, and then all of a sudden everybody goes with him. Like, it's, it's, that's, he's just a born leader, and that's, he's probably the, the one, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, Tom. Point now, that's how far open. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I no guess, matter. Um, probably the toughest man I've ever met was Torek Faulkner. Just yeah, he's just he's just one of those lads that uh, can never seem to get a ball on or get a yard on or anything like that. He's just he's uh, yeah he's top class and and as you've seen last show with Calvin, you know he's he's one of the best in the country. So he's probably the toughest one I've played against. Yeah, sure. How do you think he got his all star Tom? Sure, American Blake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've prepared and, him for it. <laughs> and uh, uh, Niall yourself the best player you played with and against over the years um, with Ballon yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd go with Tom there with um, with uh, Podge um, County as well um, as a natural leader and uh, as he said when, when when things are getting tough uh, you can always kind of rely on Podge to, to get you kind of out of a hole um, with County two points on the lads now <laughs> <laughs> With County, um, is the best player was uh, <laughs> Keegan Mackey as well. You'd have to mention him as one of the best players I've ever played with as well. Especially yeah. in that 2013 season. Like I remember some of the training you'd be in, you'd be you, you'd kind of be amazed at some of the stuff he was able to do. And he was a player at his top of his game at that time. And uh, yeah, I'd mention him as one of the best I've played with as well. What about off the pitch? <laughs> <laughs> he was good off the pitch, though, I suppose. <laughs> um, best I played against, or the, or the toughest I've marked, would probably be um, as club football, definitely, uh, Torek Faulkner or uh, Ronan McNally from Tyrone. 
Oh. Very good as well. And best player I've on, been on a pitch with, um, probably a minor level. Kyle Coney was one of the one of the best players I've ever seen. Um, if I can remember back, he was he was a massive man, and he, he, at minor level, he was able to like, kick points for fun from forty five yards, and he was he was supremely talented at uh, that age group. And Peter Hart as well, another man at underage who was who was a brilliant player. Yeah, absolutely. Now a bit of crack to finish off, Pork. I'll start off with you. The uh, best trainer within the Balnea team. Tommy, uh, and this I, is not that he's on the <laughs> handle. Well, so. no, no, we don't have to mention just the lads here. <laughs> but uh, no, in, fair, if, if, in fairness to Tommy, he um, like I know he lives close to the pitch, so he has that advantage. But he, he never misses a training <laughs> session. Um, as long as I'm around, Danny, I've never seen him miss a training session. I don't think he do, he doesn't go on many holidays or anything either, which which helps. So, um, I, I I I'd say Tommy is the is the best trainer. So that's a point in, in return yeah. to that. <laughs> We're just getting round, so just Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, worst trainer park. <laughs> the worst trainer. Um, it'd be probably Hendra Brady be the worst trainer. Um, he's a poor old, poor old scrappy, as we call him. I, I tell a funny story, and I might as well tell it a bit wider now. But he used to, we used to train up in Dublin, and, and he'd always, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't travel in to meet us. He'd say he'd go to the, it was the Glen Royal, was the name of the hotel. He'd say, myself out here, and that was grand. This went on for a few months, and then after a while, I there was there wasn't enough of us training in, in the city, so I travel out to meet him. So the two of us arrive at the car park in this hotel, and we walk into the reception, and he just goes, I "Wonder where you pay." Her. Yeah, so that obviously gave away. That was the first time he stepped foot in this hotel, and him supposed to be training there for months. Yeah. And the uh, biggest mommy's boy, um, Pork. Oh, biggest mommy's boy. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, who would that be? Softies. Um, Alan Durkin, I suppose, the biggest mommy's boy. <laughs> He's a former player, so. <laughs> Best dresser. Best dresser, Evan Finnegan, probably. He well, he likes to think he is. He's put it this way: I wouldn't fit into any of the trousers he's wearing. So. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, worst dresser. Well, you probably Evan again, no? Or um, I don't know. I'm trying to think, who else has a, a bad sense of style? Um, no, I put Evan, Evan probably is the, the worst dresser, and my brother Niall uh, probably then is the best dresser. He, he's fairly slick now, in fairness to him. Happy days, happy days. Tom, yourself, best trainer. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> I, I look at I'd say probably Kevin the Bun doesn't miss too many either. You know, uh, he's he's probably the best after myself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> No, I he wouldn't. He wouldn't miss too many. I'd say. I'd say the button. Yeah. Worst trainer. Uh, Slicko. Slicko is not great. Yeah. Mickey Higgins. Uh, if United's playing, or if there's any European games on whatsoever, Ireland's playing. No, he won't be there. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> be. And the biggest mummy's boy. Um. Don't know, but my, no. A, a, a daddy's boy, you'd be Kevin the Bon again there. Daddy the Bon, you know. <laughs> if, if he's doing umpire the ball and gets within five foot of the goals, it's a point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, best dresser? Yeah, Peewee's a good shout. Uh, he's he's probably, a one, you know, he, he goes to probably 10 or 12 weddings a year and somehow has a different outfit every time, so uh, probably Peewee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, worst dresser? Um, probably Thomas the Bone. Um, usually wears a t-shirt too small, trousers too small, no socks. You know, that would, wouldn't really suit me. <laughs> <laughs> You're old school, Tom. Uh, we, leave, yeah. <laughs> we leave the last word to uh, Niall McDee, the best trainer, Niall. Um, we were saying there about Moore being at every training, but that doesn't mean he, he trains well when he's there, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd, I'd go with Moore. I'd say Kevin the Bun. Um, 
he has a lot. He has a lot of aggression to get to get off. So he, he usually lets it off. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst dresser or worst trainer. Worst trainer. Um, worst trainer. Uh, I go with um, Juki. Oh, Juki, yeah. Colin Gumley, well, former player. Um, missed a couple of trainers, but again, when he's there, through the motions. Never gets over his <laughs> Doesn't want to break a sweat. <laughs> and the uh, biggest mammy's boy, Noel? Biggest mammy's boy, um, I'd probably go with Evan Finnegan on that one. <laughs> best, best dresser. <laughs> Best dresser after myself. Um, <laughs> Cormac McTimony, maybe. Uh, Cormac McTimony be slick enough. And the uh, worst dresser, now. Worst dresser, I'd, I'd have to go with Scrappy. Um, the, boot, the, boot cut, the, boot cut, the boot cut jeans and the, the slip on, I don't even know what they are, high tech runners or something are, are still yeah, a sure. scrap star. <laughs> I'd have to say, uh, uh, combo shorts, <laughs> combat shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I seen him driving through the town a couple of days ago. Anthony Gainer, boys, how's he fixed these days? I haven't seen him actually. Yeah, I yeah. I haven't seen him in a after, time. Uh, I seen him after the intermediate bin last year and seen him in the in the shop. But he, he, again, we don't. Unfortunately, we've been we locked down since. Pretty much yeah. last November, so we wouldn't. The usual place is Mass, is usually where you, you'd catch Anthony. In fairness to him, and that might surprise <laughs> some people, but <laughs> it, it actually is where you'd see him most Sunday. Sunday so, uh, yeah, <laughs> you said that, not me. But uh, no, he, he, he looks well. I think he, he had a he had another child there in the last few months, uh, so I think he has three kids now. Tommy may correct me on that. Ah, yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure. No, it is. He's his hands full, so. <laughs> brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Lads, that was an absolute pleasure. Thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by yorkoretro.com. Use my promo code JMAC Podcast to get 15% off on the website. Niall, Pork, Thomas, thanks a million. Cheers, John. John. Cheers, John. Thanks. Thanks, boys. Cheers.